everyone and welcome to the recent tier list update patch 9.08 we have a new unit the slime larva and the upgrade to slime siren and we're going to talk about what have the recent changes made on the meta um, what did they affect did they affect any masterman options did they affect the legion spells and primarily the units um, those are the changes that would uh, matter the most on this patch so we're gonna dive right into it I don't know if you have seen my patch notes rundown video or just played some games yourself, but I think you can see that the first three units in this, or actually all the all the units in S tier have not been touched on this patch. Um, there have not been significant wave changes, there have not been any other changes that would affect any of those units. No mercenary change really does have an effect on these units. Yes, the small um, mercenaries for gold are a bit stronger now. But the biggest impact here are the ones that are ranged, and those units do not have such a big um, disadvantage against ranged units. We have Asaria maybe a little bit against Cannonies and Lizards, but apart from this, um, in the early game, ranged units do not matter too much if you know your positioning well. So um, those units are still going to be the same, right? We have Phoenix as the broken unit if you know how to position it. We have Trinity Archer, just amazing PS um, output, especially if they have. APS with it. Asaria obviously one of the strongest single uh, single um, units. Go Divine Blessing Asaria is still the most broken single unit plus spell combo in the game. And so on, right? I think I do not have to, to tell strength about all of those units. They're just all pretty broken. I think um, I mentioned that often before and nothing changed about them. So you are still able to play them as they are outperform everyone else if you're able to position them well right i mean the biggest point about those units especially about the first three units is they are that strong because they require a specific positioning to be that strong as you're aware to guarantee position your unit well well nothing can stop you all right next on we have a tier and we can already see first unit in a tier is the new unit the slime larva and let me talk you through the positioning here so the slime larva itself which is the 50 gold base unit would honestly be up in s tier itself the upgrade though is kind of trash why is that the case what happens is the slime larva does basically have the same ability as the wanderer as it dies it resummons it does not resummon the same strength but it has a smaller version of itself but that's not what matters. What matters is that there's no instant resummon, but there's a small delay between summoning and the resummon, or if you're dying and resummon. Which means it's a perfect unit to use in your split. You place some slime larvas in the split, right? Units go there, kill it, then they want to turn around to the other side, but since there's a small delay until the, the mini slime is gonna um, blob out, they're gonna return again, so you get an extra bit of way to the wave will travel before they will have to turn around and go back, kill that mini slime, and then finally go to the um to the main wave. And if you have more of them, that might happen multiple times, or there might be some small stops in in an, uh, in between. That unit is perfect for splitting, and another really OP thing to do with them is they spam. 15 or you spam them on 15. I think most of you, especially those that are interested in high Edo competitive content, which means Nova Cups we have recently or any other cup, might know the fact that high Edo players like to spam gargoyles on 15 if they know this is their only chance to either hold or delay long enough. Why is that the case? You have a cheap unit, gargoyle 50 at 40 gold. It is arcane, plus it has, does have damage reduction, which means it doesn't die with one shot. So you just spam a lot of them, the boss will overkill them, but they do not necessarily die with one shot, but sometimes they need two or three, especially if the small ones are attacking as well. So you can have a big tank value for very cheap money. Especially on ranged waves, it often happens that multiple target, uh, multiple units target the same unit, and this way even more overkill it. So Small units on those waves are quite effective. Obviously, tier ones might just die too fast, but since it's this extra 
portion of um, fitting reduction and defensive value, which is arcane on the gargoyle, it makes the unit perfect. And slime larva is even better for exactly that purpose because once again you have a cheap unit this time it's 50 gold you have an arcane unit and you do even have to resummon it so you just spam a lot of slime larvas at top or in the split all of them will first have to be killed while that happens they already get overkilled and each of them is still gonna spawn another i'm not quite sure 160 140 hp mini slime and all of them will have to be killed as well so you basically get two units for 10 more gold which is definitely worth more than a gargoyle so slime lavas insane split unit um especially for 15 that's all the upgrade is not worth it unless you get the full mana on it and this is quite hard to achieve because you basically have to let it off tank to get more mana because it does have the same ability as the sovereign and the avenger but if you have a tank too much, it's not going to reach full mana. So it's somewhat of a weird concept for the unit itself. It does underperform unless you have it full mana, because then it does have insane HP per gold values. But it still is a tank in this case, right? Because as the upgrade dies, it will release three of those slimes. Well, if that happens, amazing if you have ranged DPS. Otherwise, Probably not gonna help you too much. Range DPS with it though, perfect, but only if it's full mana. This is why it's only A tier because the upgrade is just not strong enough. You can see here the casket is still in a very good position. We still do have the flower in a very strong position. Obviously, flower only good because of this early push you have with flower, flower opener, plus the fact that you have this, this hold for 16, right? Flower is still the go to unit for 16 if you need a quick hold out of nothing. Get two or three flowers, maybe sell some stuff for it. Easy. You see the harpy in Asia now, and the harpy actually changed throughout this patch. We did have the first hotfix coming, I think not even 24 hours after the patch was released, and there was another hotfix coming because harpy was hella broken. It is still strong, but you again require some decent um, ads in order to make it really, really strong. So I still recommend you get a buffer unit, get decent tanks, and get something that holds you 13 and 15. Obviously 18 as well, but first of all, you have to hold those two away. Apart from this, I can only say the Harpy buffs were, were very nice. I, I do like that the unit is now played a bit more often, even though in some cases, if you have all the perfect puzzle pieces, it is still very strong. I think apart from this, we can see there hasn't changed too much, right? There hasn't been too much movement in this patch anyway. I mean, the biggest, the biggest cases have been Harpy and two units I will mention in a second. Um, and obviously the Slime. I mean, Slime is the turning point on this patch to have this massive power with it. So it's basically a must pick for high level players at the moment. Okay, jumping into B tier and Nothing happened too much there as well, right? We still have the, the Pilgrim there. There was a small buff in the Pilgrim, fine. Nothing, nothing happening about it. But two unit, I have been upset about. And a lot of other players have been upset about. And those changes were the ones to Sovereign and Avenger. And to Zeus. Honestly, I created this tier list a while back already. Um, I do not necessarily know anymore if they have been in BRT already. or if. I think if they were, I think the Avenger was A tier, I can't say at the moment. But let me explain my decision to put it into B tier. Let, let us start with um, the Zeus or the, the Bazooka main. First of all, Bazooka as a unit, fine, right? 45 gold, okay. Zeus as a unit, uh, critical. Why is Zeus or Bazooka still in B tier then? Well, first of all, Pyro opener is especially good if you have Pyro flower into Millennium, for example. Pyros can save you on 12 and 16, a little bit like the flower. And there's some other chances where you might sometimes just build one or two Pyros um, as a defense fence. Okay, Zeus though is a bit different. You did have Zeus as an opener a while back. This is not the case anymore. Zeus opener is insanely weak and not to be recommended. But 
I personally feel like Zeus, especially together with Starcaller, and if you then have a Magician on top, is really broken. The damage output you get from a Starcaller and Magician is insane. A Zeus needs around 3 mana, I think, for his spell, which means if you have um, Starcaller, which is 0 0.7 mana per second, plus Magician, which is 0 0.55 mana per second, you basically spell every 2 seconds, and this is a very rapid firing. Um, Rifle then. So Zeus with some nice mana buffs. I wouldn't recommend Steeds too much, but Starcaller and um, Magician are quite valuable on it. On top of this, Zeus are good on 13, 15, 18, which are still the three common waves to send on. And this is why I think that Zeus, especially with Starcaller, is a good pick still. Otherwise, I wouldn't take it. Let's go over to the Sovereign. Well, a lot of people say Sovereign is shit, and I do 100% agree that, is, that the spell is kind of misleading. People want to have a full stack Sovereign to get to this AoE stage. I see Sovereign at the moment a little bit different, which is more of an off tank position because the spell as well gives you a bit of HP every 10% of the stacks, which means you will get a lot of extra HP, so let the tank a bit to gain more HP, right? You want to have it as an off-tank. I still only rated B tier because of a few simple reasons. First of all, it's quite strong in the early game, right? The Avenger is very strong early on, either if you get it with a Growl, it sometimes can be a good option depending on what your mate is. For example, there's a lot of Fiesta players at the moment. Sometimes it's just very nice to have an Avenger on one then with cash out in order to cover your Fiesta player and have your first big big wave from uh, 5. Sometimes this can help out. And obviously it's still very good on 13, right? You will need some backup because it's not the carry unit for 13 as for example a Phoenix is, but it's still okay-ish, right? You will still need quite a, some time or a targeted send to, to make it leak big or just to break it. So Sovereign with some nice backup damage might already be fine to hold a quite big chunk of the wave. And this is why I think it is in a balanced state, even though the unit itself is kind of disappointing in a lot of cases. All right. We still have the Egg in C tier, even though it just got a massive buff. The problem with it is that get Egg out at the moment. You have the risk of opponents or your mate playing Fiesta. At the moment, especially in higher elos, there's a lot of players playing Fiesta. I'm really not a big fan of it because I, I feel like those games are getting a little bit boring with everyone playing Fiesta, especially people that don't really understand how to play Fiesta. So a, a lot of people think it is good to league with Fiesta, but actually you do not have to league with Fiesta. Fiesta is basically a masterman option that allows you to gain an advantage even though if you're leaking. But as with other Masterman options, you always want to push a lot and if you leak small, it is fine because you push, right? So you want to have a worker advantage and even if you leak small, then obviously you do not want to leak too much or leak together with your mate too often because you die then. But if you have some calculated leaks, leak a little bit, but you have a worker advantage, it's usually good for you. And this is exactly what you want to achieve with Fiesta, just maybe a bit more often. Which means you want to push a very aggressive, the same time you accept a small leak because it's just going to give you more time, right? So Fiesta is not about preparing to leak, but Fiesta is about pushing more than usually and accepting a leak if that happens. And I think a lot of people misunderstand this concept. They always force this leak on one, they always force this re leak on two, etc. And then if somebody can play against it, either he's snailing you in one, crushing you hard with a aggressive build, or sometimes people think they're going to get a snail build, something to leak small to a snail, but your opponent doesn't snail you and he's just giving you a lot of king ups, you don't, don't really leak or you can't prepare for a leak, and it's not helping you out either. So my advice for you if you want to play Fiesta is go for that aggressive work push, but do not overforce the leak. But jumping back to Egg, Fiesta players are a big problem for it. Second of all, you obviously have a slow start to the game, right? The, the first time you really push workers is usually after wave 3 or 
towards the end of wave three, so your opponents might already have a massive advantage. And then egg is still very bad on seven, eight, etc. You might only get out one. You will need egg, Graal, and something to hold. So there's a lot of units needed at the moment, which is just yeah, a little bit too rough for most ranked games. Sometimes it happens, but since at the moment early aggression is quite common due to Fiesta, due to the recent uh, mercenary changes, I think Egg is still C tier. Apart from this, I think the tier list does speak for itself. I hope you were able to understand most of the unit choices. We did not have any change in the um, mastermind options. Please again keep in mind my Fiesta is in rank 4 because I just don't want everyone to play Fiesta. I just explained a lot about it because I think a lot of people starting with a wrong approach on Fiesta. And last but not least, let's have a quick look at the Legion spells. And there's actually only one change, which is the Glacial Touch. We had another damage nerf in the Glacial Touch. Glacial Touch was the prime example for holding undervalue on uh, 11, on 16, especially on race where units are quite close together, because then you can make use of the AoE. Just got nerfed a little bit more. And the reasoning for this was a high pick rate and not a high win rate. So I think it's good to go for a B tier rating on it. Um, the other spells have stayed the same. You see my S tier and you can actually see S tier. It's all spells that involve some mind games, right? Sacrifice, you can save up. Van Blessing, you don't have to place it right away. Plus the fact that some units are just very broken with it. Asaria, Phoenix can be good. You can hide it for two waves and then put it on 13. You can hide it even till 14, 15, um, depending when you expect to send. But this is the spell you can play a lot of mind games with. Lizard Army, you can fake very easily, right? Just send a Lizard on 11, just send a double Lizard on 12. They might go for 13 because you add a thing. You go there, bam, 50. Something like this is possible. And Pontum, obviously, right? Full bit for one wave, just sell something. Boom, build something else for the next wave. Saved. All right, so you can already see a little bit Legion spells. There's a lot of a lot of tactics involved in picking them, even though they might just be, yeah, not that good compared to allowance, right? Because you get 15 less gold. Or is it even 20 now? I don't know. But in fact, the spell is amazing if you know what you're doing. I hope you liked this episode um, of my Tillis update. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And yeah, see you next time. Bye-bye.